to be followed with the breaking of the bread. So much lightness in your spirit, in spite of whatever happens when you know a few hundred thousand people are on their knees praying for us. But this morning, as we wait at your feet, we want to be just like Mary, Lord. Put aside all our concerns, all our anxieties. Just wait at your feet. So we know, Lord, you have a word for us always. The word that brings healing. The word that brings strength. The word that brings courage. The word that promises us always that nothing can separate us from your love. The word will show us light in dark places. The word that will show us which direction to turn. Let us speak to us this morning. I pray, Lord, everyone who hears, hear, and in the days and the weeks to come, even those millions who will read the transcripts in different languages, will not hear this man. Hear your voice, and your anointing will flow. Let not the frailties of my flesh Stop, O oh God, for your anointing flowing. Not your anointing. We are nothing. We are absolutely nothing. We'll be just talented singers, talented speakers. Nothing will come out of it. It's the anointing, O oh Father, that breaks the yoke. So today, Father, I pray. Let your anointing flow, Lord, unrestricted in each one of us. Whatever yoke is there may be broken, and the word may bring forth life. Life, O God, life. That a generation will rise that will stand strong in these last days. If there is chaos and confusion in the world around, there will be a people who are strong because they know their Lord. Speak to us this morning. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. <laughs> Been looking if I'm right, if my numbers are right for over 10 weeks on love. And I'm hoping, hoping that we may be able to close this Sunday, if the Lord permits. Please remember where it all began. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. That's the one that started this. He thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love. And remember, that's how it all started with our own work. Off the cuff, I was reading that connected with something else, and the Lord says, Stop there. And we would have preferred it to be written the other way without ceasing your work of love and labor of faith. God says, No, the work of faith and the labor of love. And we know sometimes it's real labor to love. Especially ask the mothers, everyone who's had a baby, it's a real labor. If you love your babies. They will be not looking at romantic love. They're looking at the real thing. And today, once again, I want to go back. The Lord was leading me back to this most well-known story of all stories in the Gospels. If there is one parable that portrays God's love in all its glory. It is the prodigal son, the parable of the prodigal son. Question. Anybody who doesn't know the parable of the prodigal son, you can show your hand. You won't be penalized, don't worry. The house of God is always mercy. 
Who do you think was the most stressed out in the parable of the prodigal son? Father, the son. Two sons, are there? Elder son, younger son. No, you're all wrong. It was a fatted calf. <laughs> he was the only one who knew the father well and was praying the son wouldn't come back. <laughs> so today I want you to turn to that portion in Luke chapter 15. Every time you read it, every time you read it, it speaks to you fresh. A certain man, verse 11. Then he said, A certain man had two sons. This is a good storyteller. He has to be, right? He's Jesus. The first sentence itself tells you what we've been looking at. It's all about relationships. Life is all about relationships. Love is all about relationships. And there was a certain man. Who had two sons. Along with relationships comes pain. It's guaranteed. You cannot love and not hurt. If you say I am not hurt, that means you have not loved. It's not possible to love and not hurt. It's, it's built in. Unto a day when God says there is no more tear and no more sorrow. Then you will love without hurting. But till then, after the fall, pain comes in. So scripture is so very clear. Love is about relationships. Relationships is about love. And there is always pain. And that is the sum total of the law and the prophets. Love God. Love your neighbor. Love God. And love your neighbor. And this is his telling. These parables. There was a reason why he was telling these parables. If you go to verses 1 to 3, you will understand the reason. He is speaking to us all who are in the church. He's not talking to the people outside, those who are in the church. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. He doesn't say the Pharisees and the scribes drew near to him to hear him. They are also there. God's word doesn't say they drew near to him to hear. Okay? Please know. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man, it's the editor, so put man in capital letters. When they said it, it was small letters. Okay? This man receives sinners and eats with them. So, he spoke this parable to them. To whom? the Pharisees. The parable was to the Pharisees. The beneficiaries were the tax collectors and the sinners. But it was directed at them. Please understand this. Because Pharisees had a problem. Always had this problem about sinners being accepted by God. When a sinner repents and comes back, Pharisees have the religious rules. And in the religious rules, no sinner should get saved. You know, these old days, I still think there are churches like that in many places where before you could become a member of a church, the congregation needed to pass the word that you could be accepted. You know, churches have rules like that. And in one particular church, there was a gospel meeting or a revival meeting or whatever. Allah and the members, few other people from outside also came. And among the ones who came was a quite well-known prostitute from that town. She came and she got saved. When the altar call was given by the guest speaker, she with tears flowing walked and knelt down, accepted the Lord. There was pain Drop silence in the church. Everybody was thinking. Is she going to be part of our church? Until one reputable man in their midst stood up and said, Maybe we didn't expect this when we took God's word seriously. 
to conceive his will. Then the whole congregation stood up, clapped and said, You are welcome into our midst. You know who that man was? Every time you brush your teeth, remember, Colgate was that man. What's the problem with the Pharisees? They were good in theology. Majored in theology, minored in love. Minored in love. And Jesus is changing the whole story around. But yet, the message may not be the way you are thinking it's going to be. So don't get all sentimental, okay? The three parables one after another. Hundred sheep, one gets lost. Ten coins, one gets lost. Two sons, doesn't get lost, one leaves. Effort goes after that one lost sheep. One out of hundred, that's how you write in maths, one by hundred. The woman searches for one out of ten. The father refused to go after one out of two. What of love is this? It's confusing, right? One out of ten, hundred you go, one out of ten you go, one out of two. Leave the first two aside for another day. Listen, why the father doesn't go? Because all the force of the free will God has given to us as individuals comes into play. That is what we don't realize. Freedom to choose is a freedom given by God. He will not take it away. He will never take it away. It is He who gave us the freedom to stay in the house or to leave. To be with Him or to say, I don't want you, I want to go. He is not going to stop us. But that's the freedom He gave us. It's His. He will never take it away. Therefore, God the Father allows His two children, called Adam and Eve, to leave. He allows them to fall. He allows Israel to fail. He allows you and me to fail and to leave if we choose to. And even hit the big pen if we choose to. He will not stop us. And we don't understand that kind of love. The father is a big man. Not in photographs of the church. That is a big, big man. It's a big, big man. Big man in the town. He's got money, therefore he's got power. He neither uses his money nor his influence to get the boy back. Sounds very strange, right? Did he? What you need to realize? You cannot bring any person into a relationship with God other than outside of their free will. You cannot do that. They will not stay. Just a question of time before they will go again. Every relationship is best, has to be built on free will. We have to choose. As parents and teenagers sitting here, there are certain things you can tell teenagers, especially a thousand times, but it makes no difference to them. Just waiting for that magic number, 18, to make their way, usually to the big men. They don't expect every story to end this way, they don't. The truth is, often it doesn't end this way, where the son comes back and the father receives. An old missionary in the old days who used to be in the Middle East, centuries back, they understand this story because it's part of the culture there. So he went and asked in so many villages during his years there, has anything like this ever happened in this country? They said, from our history, as far as we know, he found only 
two instances where a son asks for his king's inheritance and says the record available is in the first instance when the son asked for the incident the father chased him out of the house in the second incident three months later the father died of a broken heart father doesn't die understand there are certain things which we do which we need to do because it is true we don't do things that are true expecting a particular result results are in god's hands it may happen it may not happen so don't think that if i do things this way the result will be the same no i need to do things this way because this is the way the father does things the result is in his hands some come home the prodigal son some come home or rather go home just at the death bed the holics addicts so many people finally surrendered just before dying or they leave behind a memories of just pain this young man comes back early and he's got a life ahead things usually don't happen that way and we ask this question god why did you allow that this god tells us this love is tough that's something which we don't understand love is tough god's love is tough it's one side of love which we never figure out that love is tough please understand this the father we are talking about in this parable is no father like you or me no parent like you or me it's a perfect parent absolutely perfect dad the first father recorded in history god the father with two children adam and eve a perfect father perfect home perfect environment perfect fellowship both the children walked out so parents sitting over here do not take unreasonable guilt upon yourself if your children choose to walk away It's true our choices play a part as parents. It is true Proverbs 22 and verse 6 says Train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. Is it called? It's called a proverb. Hence doesn't mean it happens every time because there are the choices that young man the young woman has to make or the parents walk under guilt as parents we fail then for our mistakes we go to god repent confess and the mistakes we made as parents we confess to our children and seek their forgiveness but the fact the child who are it is boy or girl ends up in the pig pen is because they chose to go to the pig pen boys they made there was this young boy good parents very godly parents but he was a real real pain parents did everything possible dad and mom they son put him in a christian school christian schools are expensive private christian school hoping the school will change what they could do he broke all the rules of the school and you could always find him on the roof smoking cigarettes of the dorm or sneaking to the town to get drunk so they managed to finish high school put him in college christian college they picked for him they always got reports he was drinking and fighting and as aside he was also learning how to fly planes and one day he had to be chucked out of college because for one week he disappeared because he picked a girl from his college and disappeared with her for a one week with his plane who parents good got him parents tried everything they sent him to their missionary friends who were building a hospital he went he built the hospital during the day and drank in the night he came back home one day 
Today, when you leave the church, stand outside and look at the board outside. The boy's name is Franklin Graham. He will be preaching next week in the city. Do you know the story of a real life prodigal son? That's it. You can't say Billy Graham and Ruth Graham were terrible parents. They were incredible parents. But you know what? Their children gave them a lot of pain. All came back. I'm not saying that every child will come back. They may come back, they may not come back. But the choices we make as parents has to be modeled according to what God says. And you know what? One thing as parents you should learn to do is Billy Graham and Ruth Graham will never kept their prodigal son's story secret. They were not ashamed of him. The more concerned the child should know the Lord than hiding it behind the carpet. The major mistakes we do as parents is that we hide because we are more concerned about our reputation. If you have looked in the Bible, you will see our God is not very much bothered about reputations. Everything is written in black and white. What his children did. Everything is written. Most other religious texts, everything is whitewashed. Here everything is there. Because he says, I'm not trying to preserve a reputation. I'm trying to save my children. That's something which we need to understand. They're not trying to save our reputation. They're trying to save our children. Sometimes it means opening up and telling. I'm going through this because my child is rebelling. The son is rebelling. My daughter is rebelling. Whether you like it or not, it's just the only body you have. You may trust, you may not trust. Some may speak, some may not speak. Some may gossip, some may stand. How does it matter? At the end of the day, what do I want? I want my son and my daughter to you. They are saved. What will you say? <laughs> he was like that. He is like this. That's what you will say, right? Amen. That's a story about everybody. Immediately get this. What we need, we want our kids home. The prodigal son's life started in Genesis 3. When the Satan comes and tells the man and the woman, first for the woman, and the man takes it from her, that your freedom, your freedom, you will never be free under the rules of this man who comes to walk with you in the night. You know, somebody who comes to walk with you in the evening and has put you to work over here, you will never be free. Only when you will be free is by doing what he told you not to do. That is how you will be free. Every child thinks when they are growing up, the only way I can be really free is do exactly what my mom told me not to do. Dad told his son, his eldest son called Adam, there's a tree, there's a fruit, don't eat of it. If you eat, you will die. One rule. Where was the rule given? By a father to a son. Don't eat. If you eat, you will die. The enemy comes and says, it's not true. If you eat, you will not die. You will be, you know what? Free. You'll be like God, free. How do you know he doesn't eat of that fruit? Maybe he does. Maybe he wants to keep you away from the freedom which he enjoys. You will be like him if you eat. Freedom comes from that. From that day, it's been going on in every house. From Genesis 3 onwards, do you see God giving rules to anybody? No rules given after Genesis 3 until Exodus 19. 
No rules given. Because in Exodus 19, he brings his people, Israel, out of Egypt into the wilderness and says, You are my family, my home, I am your father, now let me give you rules. Doesn't give rules to anybody between Genesis 3 and 19. If some people chose to walk with God, then he gave them rules as individuals. He never gave rules to anybody else. Because rules are for children. It's for children. It's only when they have been brought out and told, I am your father, you are my children, you will be a special nation for me, this is what your father is like, these are the rules. Are you getting the picture? But, the freedom to choose. Adam and Eve, you have the freedom to choose. If you choose to live under the rules I have given you, one rule alone, we can, we can stay together under this house. But if you think you are 18 and above, and you can make mature choices, which is against my rule, then I will not stop you from making the choices, but I will open a door and tell you, you can be to go. Before you go, I will dress you also and send you out. You cannot come in again. What happened? You know what the first father did? When his teenage children rebelled, he told them, out. I love you. You want to stay under my roof? My rules go. A lie was sold in the garden and afterwards, God is a tyrant. God is a tyrant. His rules are all there to steal my joy. Jesus puts it all across in this parable called the parable of the prodigal son. You know the truth about the 18 year old? I want to put him as 18 years in our perspective. 18 years is a magic number. Everywhere in the world, 18, 18 and I will be free. I don't have to listen anymore. 18 and I will be free. Not so much in India but in the western nations, yes. The prodigal son actually got what he wanted, but he lost what he had. Understand this, young people, especially young people. There's a difference between longing for freedom and lusting for freedom. Second one is freedom to sin. That's when they say, don't tell me what to do. Young men, young women, husbands, wives, everybody. Mm. Everybody becomes prodigal sons, prodigal prodigal daughters, prodigal husbands, prodigal wives, everybody is prodigal. Don't tell me what to do. You don't tell me whether I can drink or not, okay? Don't tell me that. Oh, how many hundreds of husbands tell this every day in the world to their wives? Don't tell me not to drink. Who are you to tell me not to drink? My husband will turn around and tell the child, Don't go out after six. One rule applies to her, the other rule doesn't apply to you. So who is the prodigal here? I think prodigals are only children. No, there are many, many adults who are prodigals. A little example I'm talking about. Plenty of daily examples. And scripture says in verse 12, the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. At the law, he's the second son. The two sons, so the elder son gets two thirds, and the first son, second son gets one third. So he divided. So okay, we will not look at the terribleness of that question and all because we have looked at it many times. Don't understand this tough love of God. If it is not our prayer, is not Thy will be done. But my will be done. One day God will say, let your will be done. Go. And leave. You said, which is true. This is your, this belongs to you anyway. You can take. 
Say chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. God did this with individuals. God did this with nation of Israel. Israel. 16, 16. For Israel is stubborn like a stubborn calf. How is Israel? Stubborn like a stubborn calf. Now the Lord will let them forage like a lamb in the open country. Ephraim is joined to idols. Lay him alone. It's really stubborn. You don't go. You don't know. You don't know. If that's what they want, if that's where they think their freedom lies, let them go. Islam has something interesting to say. He says, Sin is man saying to God throughout his life, Go away and leave me alone. And hell is God finally saying to man, you may have your wish. I leave you alone for all eternity. Verse 13 of Luke 15, verse 13 says, But many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. It's a very loaded one verse because we don't understand it because we are thinking in terms of the father withdrawing money and giving him a deed. No, this is a landowner, a state owner who owns slaves and flocks, cattle, sheep and servants. He divided his property which includes his slaves and his flocks. How does scripture say? The boy gathered his part. He mean that he sold the slaves? Because he was not interested in the slaves or the flocks or the sheep. He was interested in making them into money and carrying it easy. Suddenly the father's 50 years or 60 years of back breaking work is just gone. Converted into gold or silver and taken. Are you getting it? Here you go. He journeyed to a far country. First, understand this. Nobody goes to a far country. The far country first exists in your mind. And you could be right here when you are sitting here. You could be in a far country. He finished service and you go out on the streets. You will see so many people. Sitting there, right? Every Sunday after Sunday after from the time we have been coming here, have you been seeing them? Between them and salvation just lies one door, that side or this side. Have you seen any one of them going? No. They're just two steps away, but they are in a far away country. Telugu service, Telugu is there. You want Hindi service? Hindi is there. What language you want? It is there, but they will not say. Please know this. Nobody goes to a faraway country in one day. It begins a long, long time before in your money. One day it is manifested out in words. Give me my share so that I can go. Married man, woman who now enjoys the attention he she gets at the workplace is already on a trip to the faraway country. So manifest one day, it's not dealt with then. In the process, there will be a building up. Oh, how unhappy I am in the marriage. Building up, building up, building. It's like the defense attorney getting all the witnesses to file the case. The real reason is you're already planning to go to a faraway country. You're just building up a case. One day he suddenly comes up. I am tired of this marriage, I want to leave. You mean this morning you woke up and decided to leave? That's how the innocent party always thinks. The man or the woman thinks. What happened to you? Last night you were very nice. You had dinner together nicely, you were all loving. This morning you got up and said you want to leave? And you know when he or she says it, they mean it. And I think, what happened? We don't realize the decision to go to the faraway country has been building up over a period of time. 
It didn't happen with the prodigal son, that day, or with anybody in an instant or in a day. The question is, one day they will leave. How long will you hold them? They will immediately leave. There is a son or a daughter, or unfaithful spouse. One day they will leave. How long will you hold them? Now we are at that point where we need to understand how do we deal in love there. This is the point where our love breaks and we start compromising. Please, please don't go. Please don't go. And it's no longer about the other person, it is about us. The minute the police comes from the innocent party, it is no longer about the party who wants to leave, it is about the party who says, don't go, don't go. I cannot live without you, don't go. Then the conditions are being set. Okay, I will stay under protest. Some women go to the extent of saying you can bring your other woman also here. Please don't go and leave my children. They do. And they think they love. God says we didn't love at all. That's why we need to understand this message. Love is tough. Very, very tough. And we as parents and individuals don't understand this part. We ultimately sow in their destruction. Maybe the only way you will get your child back is from the pig pen and nowhere else. And you don't let that happen. He will make or she will make your home into a pig pen. And ultimately you will lose everything. God is a tough God. He loves. He loves in truth. Father, let him go. So he can go. He can take your inheritance also. It's yours and it. But children work and they get their pocket money. Suddenly they will say, don't tell me how to spend it. No, it's true. Don't tell me how to spend it because I worked for it. They may be 12, they may be 13, they may be 14, but they will say, don't tell me how to spend it because I worked. The parents don't want to know how we spend it, but they're trying to say, don't waste it. Learn to be a good steward. Don't tell me. It's my money. You will always see the minute they start getting a little financial independence, rights will be getting to be established. It's my money. It's only 10 rupees, it is my money. If I want to buy candy, I will buy candy. We will try to tell them, put one rupee in the church offering bank, that is your tithes, don't tell them. Please understand this. Moms and dads, if your children have made wrong choices, the choices were theirs. The boy wanted wild living in the house. The father would have shown him the door. What did you do with the money? What are you living? Yeah, you have a word about them. What does it say? Not economic terms. Okay. Wasteful spending. Governments have a separate bracket for that in the budget already, wasteful spending. The father had made no such budget provisions. The son made it. Prodigal living. If he had tried that in the house, the father would have said, out. I'm telling you, how many parents will do that? Let me tell you, you need to do that if you want to save your child. Save yourself a lot of sin. If you say it in, and above, let him go. If he's 18 and he comes drunk and knocks at your door, don't open the door, let him sleep on the doorstep. Let him sleep on the doorstep with the dogs. Oh, Mama, so go come my bed, clean him up and put him in the bed. Go on. You don't have to open the door for any son or daughter who comes after the time that was set by you. Stay outside. You wanted your freedom, right? That's where freedom is. The other side. This side of my house is where freedom lies for me. I chose to stay in, you chose to stay out. You wanted your freedom, then stay out. You come in, you go by the rules. It is for you, for me, for everybody. It's not easy, but that's how God is. 
We can't think about this loving, wonderful God locking the gates of Eden and putting two children out into a wilderness. There is no supermarket. There is no fast food joint. There is no shelter. There is nobody. God said, out. You will love. It's tough. He kept, hired a commando force. Security also with a flaming sword. Stand there. Don't let them get in. Okay? That's your job. Stand there. When they try to sneak in, don't let them. To Israel, what did he say? You want to leave? You don't want to listen to me? You want to leave? Live. Super fast. Babylon Express is coming. <laughs> Catch it. You can go. The atmosphere in your home may be sad. Painful. But one thing is guaranteed. You will have quiet. You will have rest. That you will have. It won't be happy. Because children are missing at the table. For his spouse is gone. But what you will have is rest. Chronicles chapter 36, 20 and 21. Fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, the Babylonians have come. Until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths, as long as she stayed desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. How many years? 490 years the children of Israel were always saying. We want to go to Babylon. 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 We like the Babylonian gods. We like the Babylonian gods. We like the Babylonian gods. When they went, what happened? The land was desolate, but it had rest. The home may be desolate. It may be painful. It may feel empty. But one thing will be there. There will be rest. This that the son resented in the father's house. What was the lack? Verse 13 and verse 30. Verse 13 says he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And like I told the elder brother, brothers know better, no? I told you last time, he tells, as soon as this son of yours came who has devoured your livelihood with one of the activities is mentioned there. One of the prodigal living part is mentioned over there. Getting the picture? So what is the fact that he resented in the father's house? He could not indulge in prodigal living in the father's house. That was his problem. Founded himself with questionable friends and questionable activities. Getting the picture? Young people sitting over here, let me ask you. What is that your father or mother says that you don't like? That they say you don't like. If they tell you to sit and study, why do you dislike that? Unless you work hard, you're not going to do well. If they tell you go out but come back before six, why are you upset? If they tell you I want to know your friend before you let you go to her or his house, why are you upset? Reasonable parents have reasonable rules. They make unreasonable rules. What was the prodigal son upset about? Verses 14, scripture says, But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him to his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pots that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Now, this, let me caution, statutory warning for parents. This may happen, may not happen. It may take a long, long time. When you read scripture, it is one line. A famine came. A famine that hits your rebellious child may take 15 years. 
I take deep to yours. It happened even after your head and gone. The timeline. Famine could be because he spent all his money. Two things are there. One says he spent all his money. Right? It is not necessary today's teenagers to become tomorrow, tomorrow's IT professionals. Well-to-do young people in the industry will lose all their money. But I promise you, you may not lose all your money. A day will come when you will lose your strength to use that money. Again, the most interesting example for us. What could did Steve Jobs millions do with him? I heard the latest joke on Steve Jobs standing at the pearly gate and Peter is looking through all sheets. Is your name there? Steve Jobs is telling Peter, I got an application for that. You don't have to turn all these pages. My name will come. It didn't work. I'm not making any judgmental statement that his cancer was because of this or anything. But I'm saying there is a stage in anybody's life where your money has no more power. It will come. You have no money at all. You ran out. Mm-hmm. Along with that came a famine. And says a severe famine. Remember the severe famine that came in Joseph's brother's time? Who sent that famine? God sent that famine during Joseph's time because God is a God whose love is tough. The whole idea was to make those prodigal brothers come back home. That was the purpose of the famine. The funny part about Joseph's story is we leave Benjamin out. Here there are ten brothers who are living in the father's house and there is one brother who was in the faraway country. Who is the one in the faraway country? But in reality, spiritual truth, Joseph was in his father's house and these ten brothers were in the faraway country. Wherever Joseph was, God was with him. He was in his father's house. It's a difference. Reason Joseph lived in plenty while well, here they are always being hit by famine and fear and anxiety and worry. And the famine was tailored by God to bring the prodigal sons come to their senses. God is asking us, is anybody going through a famine? Apparently, this is true. Some people will have to go a long, long way before they will come to their senses. Verse 17 says, when he came to himself, and I will say, when he came to his senses. People don't come to their senses easily, even if they get knocked on the head. Some people come to their senses at the deathbed. Some may not even come to their senses, they just die in their rebellion. That's true. In Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 25 onwards, God makes as a father this passionate appeal to Israel, his children. 18 verse 25 onwards. You say the way of the Lord is not fair. It's what we hear. Everybody tell it is not fair. You thought it was new. You invented it. No. It was there in the word of God much before your great grandfather was born also. You say the way of the Lord is not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is it not my way which is fair? Is not the rules which I say which is good? And your ways which are not fair. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness which he committed and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive. Alive. Because he considers and turns away from all transgressions which he committed, he surely he shall surely live and not die. Yet the house of Israel says the way of the Lord is not fair. 
O house of Israel. It's not my ways which are fair and your ways which are not fair. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. Everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed. Get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Did you get the picture? The father saying, I have no pleasure in anybody dying. Just turn around and look. Oh Israel, oh my children, just turn around and look. Just look. Turn around. When you hear this is wrong, it is wrong, just turn around. Don't think I can handle it. The whole human history is telling you, you can't handle it. You can't break those rules and believe you can handle it. He says, you will die. You will die. You will die. Maybe you will get saved on your deathbed, but the rest of the life you lived was a life of death. There was nothing in it. Do you want to die? You see what's happening here? In 33, Ezekiel 33, verse 11, God again reiterates there is pain in his heart. It's a father speaking to his children. So say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked turn away from his way and learn. Turn, turn from your evil ways. So why should you die, O house of Israel? Get it? I don't even have it. We, we hear Bin Laden or this one, this thing. And I don't feel, I don't feel good about it. I only wish that they got saved before they died. But Jesus died for them too. So God... You are a sinner. It's not the quantity of your sins or what you did. You are a sinner, period. And Jesus died for all of them. But when the wicked dies, we may feel a little relief. God says, no, not me. You don't see me. I am a father. I am a father. Do you know my, my son Moses? He was a murderer. Do you know my son Paul? He was a murderer. I don't want to see the death of the wicked. I want him to get saved. And be part of my family and fulfill their purpose. Please remember, get this. God sends no one to hell. We choose. Truth. God put his son through hell so that we wouldn't go there. That's the truth. God is asking us, are we supporting the prodigal's behavior by our false love? That we settle down for compromise. Please, please don't love. Please. Mothers are more guilty about that than fathers. Much more guilty. And God's rule is change your behavior or change your address. Change your behavior, change your address. Don't put your address as mine. In this address, under this address, these are the behavior codes because you are 18 plus. You can establish your own address now if you want to have your own rules. Change your behavior or change your rules. Sorry, address. And where did the boy end? The boy ended in the pig pen. The father is not holding on to any false reputation. He is not holding on to any false pride. He did not bail him out. I heard my son is looking after pigs. He's a good Jewish kosher family he has come from. Before everybody gets to know, please take this money, bring him back. I don't want everybody knowing my son is looking after pigs. God said, let him stay there. Let everybody know he's looking after pigs. Maybe that's the only way he will come home. If I bail him out now, I'll have to bail him out two months later. He'll go back to the pig pen. How many parents have repeated this mistake over and over and over and over and they're still bailing them out? <coughs> when I was young, the Indian teachers in the school caned us. The Bhutanese teachers whipped us with the leather and they whipped us here, not on the hand. So one day I was whipped. Red wells. My mother, sorry, mother, no. Oh, this thing. Ran to my father, who is the principal, and said, Did you see? 
that teacher will be our son. <laughs> and she lifted my hand and showed it to my son. My father looked at me, he didn't look at me, he looked at me and said, before you get from me, get out of the office. <laughs> No court of appeal here. The teacher whipped you, you deserve it. Are we getting it? Doesn't work with God. When he came to his senses, scripture says, when he came to his senses, when he was sitting with his friends earlier, when he had money at the pubs, at the dancing halls, having a good time, he was not in his senses. He did not come to his senses. The money which you keep on giving to enable your teenager, your young man, your young girl to keep on continuing their lifestyle is not going to bring him into his senses. He must have sat there with his friends and cracked a few jokes about you. You know my dad, old fashioned fellow. Old man. I can fool him always. I can always fool the wool over his head. He's my mother. But dad is tough. I can always get it out of my mother. I know when I was growing up, how boys used to talk about their parents, about their father especially. The jokes were all about their father, unless the mother ran the house. If the mother was a tough one, then it's the jokes are about the mother. But if usually the father is a tough one, the jokes are all about the father in teenage circles. In Malayalam, we have this term for old man as mupilan. means old man. And they will say, what did your mupils? Say now. <laughs> Little later I heard how slang is changing how much. Little later I heard another fellow say, What did your moops say? <laughs> another day I heard another one say, What did your pills say? They are all talking about their father. Oh, your father allowed you to go? Pills allowed you to go for this movie with us? So he's changing. Fellow will say, No, my father doesn't know I'm coming with you. You must have cracked quite a lot of jokes about your father. So must have. And he's sitting here. Because you didn't like his rules. If it's the mom, the one who disciplines, the children have lots of jokes, remarks to make about the mother. But if you fooled your mother, then your mother is a fool in that circle in which you are. When he sat with the other swineherds in the evening, he must have still thought he was okay because we all seem to look alike. But when did he come to his senses? It says, he came to himself, he said, how many of my He came to his senses when he started thinking about his father's house. When you sit in your circle and the pub, you will think I am cool. Even if you eat the pig pen and sit with the other swine herds, you will think you are still okay. But when you start thinking about your father's house and think about Jesus, that's when you realize I am I'm not cool. The beginning of the journey. Back. Till then you can always look around and say, she is doing it, he is doing it, that one is doing it, I'm, I'm sorry, it's fine. But when you look at the father's house, it's when things start changing. His thoughts turn homeward. That's the beginning of change. That is the whole point of tough love to bring you to that point. Then you will start looking home. Did he say? Remember in my own words? You are not fair. Your rules are too hard. So it's 17. Oh, how generous is my father. Even the hired servants have bread enough and to spare. Suddenly, when the hunger is pinching your stomach and you have lost your money and your name and reputation and your friends, suddenly you are seeing your father in the actual life. My father was good. When I was in my father's house, did I ever lack? They go ever hungry. I, I rebelled against him and I said, you are, you are like those, I want to leave. But never think about it. Even the servants have more than enough. The father actually is generous. 
They have to let their children go if they're able to much. They need to get to know our Father. Father is generous. I mean, the servants have more than enough. Confession alone will not bring restoration and deliverance. Please remember, there is a beginning. The mark of true repentance is when the prodigal son desires again to be subject to the authority of the father. His children will come back home and say, I won't stay more than a day. Please give me 100 rupees. I'm hungry. I need food. But I don't like the rules still. And we think, oh, my son has come back. God says, he hasn't come back. He's hungry. Let him go. If he's sick, put him in the hospital and let him go. He's not come back home yet. Has not come home back home yet. When they come home, is when they come back saying, I like your house. I like your rules. I know those rules are good for me. I want to come under your authority again. This time I know I, I deserve nothing. Because whatever you gave, I threw it away. I just come. Just as I am. Can I be a servant? No, 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 not a servant. Can I be like one of your hired servants. Not servants. There are servants and hired servants in the Jewish system. The servants lived in the father's house. They could also own stuff. They were well off. The hired ones came, worked and went outside and stayed. He said, I cannot be even one of your servants. Just one of your hired servants. Put me on wages. And I'll go back. At the end of the day, no rights. Please hire me. Enough that we make resolutions. Resolutions should turn into action. Everybody makes a resolution. December 31st is coming. Resolutions. If resolutions alone did the work, how many resolutions have been passed by our assemblies and parliaments? Has nothing, anything come out of it? Because what was lacking was action. In the same way at the individual level, what all resolutions we made, we didn't follow it up with action. You need to understand, conviction can lead to despair, but it can also lead to repentance and restoration. Understand this, young people. You get lost when you claim your rights in your father's house, and you will be found when you surrender your rights. Father allowed him to suffer the consequences of his action. Why? Because it was he who said, What you sow, you will reap. We are always trying as parents under this false love to get between their reaping and their harvest. And that's why they never accept the Lord. God says, No, stay away. Don't play God in their lives. You don't really love your son or your daughter. You allowed them to progress so much because you stood in between. Stop bailing them out again and again. I'm telling you the truth in God's house. My son does the crime, he will pay the fine. He will do the time. I will not bail him out. If it's a non bailable offense, he will spend his time and come out. Yeah. My spiritual children, who were criminals, one. And have come back to the father's house and are falsely accused. I'll sell everything I have to bail them out. Back to the father's house. It's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. You are innocent. You haven't done anything. God will move heaven and earth on your behalf. Because he's a father. He who touches you touches the apple of my eye. Israel, for your sake, I have rebuked nations. That's God. But if you choose to go to Babylon, you're free to go. You're free to go. These mothers sitting here, 
Don't run to school and bail out your children every time they create a commotion over there. Don't do it. Don't do it. If the teacher has called you and sent a bad report, it always usually is. I'm talking as a father was a principal and mother was a teacher. I'm telling you, it's always usually because your child misbehaved. Don't go there and fight for his rights. Think of a real incident. A seven-year-old boy walked through the school in a school in US, broke everything in the school. Broke, 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 broke. Not a single teacher, not a single prin principal. Nobody moved. You know why? Because the parents had told the school, lay a hand on my son, we will sue you. How many years do you think he's going to spend his life in jail when he grows up? And most of his life in jail. They already taught him how to make your way to jail. We don't want to get sued. We buckling under pressure. Parents buckle under pressure. If you do this, I will leave. Leave? I'll pack your bags also for you. Leave. What is that you dislike? What is that is upsetting you? And young people, as you grow up, learn. Be consistent in the way you deal with children. The big men of God and women of God, they are with children. When astray, it's no guarantee. The thing you can do is trust this God. You cannot play God in the lives of your children. You see, through Israel's history, all the prophets came and wrung their hands. Oh, Israel, Israel is... God was not wringing his hands. He already had a plan out for it all. He wasn't done. Parents are forever bringing. What will happen? What will happen? Nothing. All you can do is what God has said. And leave it in the hands of God. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. Absolutely nothing. You can influence their life maybe. But you cannot make them take the decisions to choose God. No man can do that. Not even Billy Graham could do that. Only God could is note, many choose to live in the Big Bang, even in the time of famine, they don't want to come home. They like their alcohol, they like the bottle, they like their drugs, they like the woman I say, they like whatever it is, and they don't want to leave the Big Bang, they like the Big Bang. What are you going to do? Feed them there? God says leave them. There's a hidden factor over there that brought him back. Is not mentioned. I believe the father and the mother, like Billy Graham and Ruth, or John Piper, all big names, their children rebel. Never stop praying. They never stop praying. That's something which you never saw. They never stop praying. Getting the picture? They never helped his habit. They never stopped praying. See, with this unconditional confession of sin, I will arise, go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose. The journey home has given me. The journey home has given me. That's how it begins. Everybody, whatever stage in our life, we were in the house, spiritually one, and we have gone out. The way begins, always the way back to the father's house is this. I have sinned against you. Sins against you. I want to come back. That's how it begins. There's no other way. That's how it should begin. If your prodigal son or your prodigal daughter wants to come back, that is how it should begin. Not that they came back home because they were hungry. However, as soon as the hunger is satisfied, they will leave. They may even take some more stuff now that doesn't belong to them and go while they are leaving. It won't work. No, it's tough. But this is God's love. Tough love. 
He looked through the Bible. He allowed people to choose and live. Yet he cries to them as a father, come back and live. Why do you want to die? Why do you want to die? Why do you want to die? That's a question we ask. If you don't want to get at the elder brother, you'll do it next Sunday. The elder brother is more complicated. Complicated, that boy is very complicated. The younger brother leaves the house by saying, I don't like your rules, give me my money, and I want to go. Once everything is over, he eats the pig and he looks and says, my father is so generous. This fellow stays in his father's house and he eats nicely every day, he's got everything. When there is a party going on, he's standing there and saying, you are very stingy. You never ever gave me even a skinny goat to eat. Now the younger one is saying, my dad is generous. The other one is saying, you know what, you are a miser. Where was he all this while? In the father's house. God our hearts. God our hearts. He could be in our father's house all our life. And still thinking, you know what, when my father is like this. <laughs> Doesn't want to make a mistake. Is that how you think about your father? I said, every time I study this parable of the prodigal son, it speaks fresh in me. I love it. We are all prodigal sons. And I look back, I'm telling you, honestly, before God, I'm telling you, when my father did all those things to me, I was, I was not cheerful like this. Oh, he beat and beat me up. Real, real bad, he beat me up. And I was really angry. Now when I look back, He's been dead and gone from 1994. I hold him with great respect. Great respect. I know what it was to be a prodigal son. You got doubts? Next time my mother come ask her how much trouble I gave her. Last night also I talked to her. And she has a Malayalam way of saying, you are the son who washed my womb out. (laughs) The youngest one. And my life is all about you now. You ask her when I was young. It is not the truth. It's not the truth. I gave her trouble, unimaginable trouble. Because I was one child who grew up with her. So you want to know what a prodigal son is like? You ask her, she will tell you. I stood longer when I ran away from my house. In Bhutan. The place you will see on TV where the king got married. The place next to it. Beautiful place up there in the mountains. Well, up there, two rivers flowing with one bridge connecting one whole set of Bhutan to the rest of the world. I was up there. Usually, every time a student went and complained, I did something, it was true. It was true. Usually, it was the girls. I was only in class five. Don't worry, only in five. One day, it was an accident. I didn't do anything. It was an accident. Something fell and hurt a girl's leg. My father, as usual, caught me thrashing. Suddenly, my self-righteous soul is shaken because now I am innocent, not guilty. So I did one thing. I just ran from my house. I'm telling you what my father. My father didn't move. My mother, morning till evening, all through the town, the village, the market, everywhere, calling out my name, asking everybody, did you see this little Indian boy? He's not like you, he's dark. Did you see him anywhere? Did you see him anywhere? Calling, 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 calling. My father did not get up from his chair. There was a small little cave near the military training camp. I got into it and I fell asleep for the next five hours. My father was very wise. He's a smart man. He took his phone, called up the bridge and said, if an Indian boy comes, just stop him there. He sat in his chair. My mother is searching all around the town. Are you getting the picture? Finally, evening I woke up and I hear my name being shouted. I put my head out of the hole and I see my father. I waved my hand. My mother said, she cried, she wept, everything. She hugged me, everything. No scolding, nothing. She told me, I will take you back home and lock you in the bathroom. I know when your father's temperature will come down. Then I will release you. Do one thing. Go fuck at his feet. She knew the story of the prodigal son very well. I'm not kidding. 
fall at his feet and tell him, Father, forgive me, I will never do this again. It worked. <laughs> for once, for such a major crime, I did not get trapped. You tell, ask my mother, she'll tell you how terrible I was. I have stoned her. Everything possible has been. They know the stories. That's why they like going to see my mother. They compare themselves with me, not with Jesus. <laughs> how good we are. The truth is, you know, every prodigal son can come home. Every prodigal son can come home. Okay. As parents, my father knew principles of scripture better than most believers. He knew how to deal and he wasn't shaken. He's never shaken, never moved. And he never kept the rod away from me out of any false sympathy. I'm not saying that you should thrash your child as they grow up, appropriate punishment. But it works. And after time it doesn't work. What do you do? Eat to eat. You don't like the roots? Free to eat. These are the roots. And be more loving and kind and compassionate than God Himself. He let His children go. I will also let you go, but I'll never stop praying. I'll never stop praying. Even Graham talks about a day that changed his life. He was very hungry. So he came one day to his father's house. Long hair and everything on his bike he came. I don't know how many rings and all he had, I have not told. He came. And he said, his father, Billy Graham, was in a board meeting with all his directors. And they told him, your son has come, your missing son has come. So call him. Called him and Billy Graham stood up and introduced his board of directors. This is my son, Randy. And he said, that day I understood. My father was not ashamed of me. That began his journey back home. Let me tell you, children, your father in heaven is not ashamed of you. He's not. Irrespective of what you have done, he is not ashamed of you. Not ashamed of you. Not ashamed of you. Not ashamed of you. Now, out of the father's house, you can start your journey back. Now. So, father, I want to come back home. I want to come back home. Don't overshoot the story and say, this is what is waiting for me. No, leave that. I come with no conditions. I, I threw it all out. But I know you love me. I know you love me. And I know you're very, very generous. Very, you've got a big heart. When I lived under your roof, I was safe. I was safe. He said, anybody sitting here who can say, I couldn't eat the past 10 months. I didn't have a roof above my head. I had to sleep on the pavement. Not that if you had to, that doesn't mean he's not loving. Many of our people do sleep on pavements. That doesn't make them doubt God's love. You getting the picture? So when we come to this table, get a picture about what this table is about. It's a table for all prodigal children. When you come to the father's house, there's one fatted calf in heaven which was prepared to be slaughtered when the prodigal children came back. And his name was Jesus. This is many things in that story. Somebody said, if Jesus had been the elder son, he would have left the father's house and gone in search of the younger one. And I would have stayed with him until he got him back home. That's exactly what he did. He came because we, the younger ones, left the father's house, went to the pig pen. So he, the elder brother, came down and said, let him take you home. But if we choose to stay in the pig pen, he says. As we heard today, it's so simple. It's so simple. Don't make it very complicated. All you have to do is what the prodigal son did. Lord, I have come to my senses this morning. I just want to come to you, Lord. And say, I messed up. I messed up big time. 
And I want to come back to you. I want to come back to you. I come to you just as I am. I'm claiming no rights. I'm claiming no rights. Just coming to you. Let the father do his part. Don't worry about the father. He's an incredible father. He will do a lot of stuff. Remember, what did he tell the servants? As soon as he saw the sun coming, bring the What robe? Who wears the best robe in the father's house? The father wears. Be my robe. The robe that I wear for special occasions. Get that. Get that. Get that. I want that. Because I want this whole village to know my son is forgiven and reinstated. I want him to wear my robe. You know what scripture says? You and I are clothed in Whose righteousness? Christ's righteousness. The best hope. Hallelujah. The best hope. The best. Not Gabriel's, not Michael's. Not any cherubim of Seraphim. The best hope. That's what. Today you want to come back home. God is still here. Come home. Come home. still haven't accepted the Lord as his Savior and you still are struggling if you're not willing to surrender when the bread and the cup comes to you please let it pass don't worry about who's sitting next to you it's got nothing to do with anyone not even with me it's just between you and the Father say so, Father I want to come to your table but I still need to deal with something and I want to come but if you can, you can deal with it right now. Right now. And you will see the bread and the wine, the symbols of his body and his blood, will bring healing. It will bring healing. His body was broken for me to be whole. His blood was shed. My prodigal living and my prodigal past should be far away, forever, washed clean. There's no record, church, I'm promising you. There is no record of your repented sins in heaven. Doesn't matter how many human mouths voice it in heaven, there is no record of your repented sins. It's been washed. You are not seen as you sit here in the house today. You are seen clothed in the Father's best room. That's how he sees. As the word says, seated in the high places with Christ Jesus. So this morning, the first Sunday of the eleventh month, I'm here, Lord, just amazed by your love. Enemies around the world keep looking as to what is a mystery. There's no mystery. For the love of Jesus. Come to you. Because they know. That you love. Anyone. And everyone. The prodigal who comes home. Repentant. Is welcome. Full of heavens. Bursts into rejoicing. Over every sinner who repents. World around. O oh, Father, we see your love. Love that we have to offer. Your rules in your word are framed because you love us. Your servant David says, I have delighted in your love. It's to the Lord. Delight in your love. To know that it does, does, do good to us. Those rules were written to preserve us, to keep us safe and secure under your wings. Even death would have no power over us. Speak of God, speak. Speak of God even. 
to even more multitudes, speak to them. Let them know there is hope in the Father's house. You will no way cast out anyone who comes to you. It makes no difference to you who he or she is. Prince or prostitute, beggar, banker, Hindu, Muslim, Jew, Christian, whatever they come from. All you want is your children to come home. Even today in your house, touch. There are any prodigals in your house today? Touch of spirit. Holy Spirit, touch. That they may come to their senses. They would rise to their feet and say, I'll go back to my father. That in his house even the hired servants eat well and have enough to spare. My father is good. His house is good. His rules are good. I want to go back to my father's house. And you will not reject them. I know, Lord, for that's your word. Touch. God of peace. God who came to reconcile man to the father. Touch. Touch today. Oh, let the anointing of Elijah flow through your house. Now, and through all your houses, restoring the hearts of the fathers to the children, the hearts of the children to the fathers, before your great and terrible day comes. Let the anointing flow, Father. Let the anointing flow. Let there be restoration. Let the prodigals come back home, O oh God. Let the prodigals come back home. Let them come back home. Wherever they are sitting, in the pig pen, touch them. Even now, touch them. Maybe a brothel, it may be a five-star hotel. Wherever they are, touch them. Bringing into their remembrance their father's house. Let them come back home. Dear Father, thank you. You've been so good to us. You've been so faithful. All these weeks, days, months, another month. We are here. We are so small, so few. But you have been so good to us. In us we have nothing to boast about. Neither a number, prestige or position. We are nothing. All we can boast is that you have loved us. Loved us so much. We want to thank you, Father. We know, Lord, we don't deserve this. But we thank you, we serve a God who loves those who do not deserve to be loved. Hey Lord, every hurting soul in your house today, oh Father, put your arms around them, Lord. Comfort them. As you did the prodigal son. Comfort them. Put your arms around them. Comfort them. Let them feel in their spirit the kiss of the Father. Knowing they are loved and they are safe. Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you cry. How I long to take you under my wings. Even today, how you long to take your children under your wings. Comfort, console, strengthen, empower, O God. Come with all our churches, all our dear pastors. You know we have seen none of them. They have never heard their voice, nor seen their faces. We may not even meet them. But you have joined them together in the body of your Son. And by faith we stretch forth our hands, O oh God, and we bless them. Wherever they are, wherever they gather today, bless them, bless them, bless them. Give them strength in them. Let your angels stand guard around each one of them, O oh God. Comfort Karen. And her three children. Comfort, Lord. Comfort. Speak to them and comfort them. Thank you, Father. We praise you, God. We worship you, God. We give you glory and honor. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us. Amen.